One of my favorite solos, and I find it really fun to teach people uh, because it's just, it's so challenging on a feel level, is Another Brick in the Wall, part two um, by Pink Floyd, of course, David Gilmour. And so with this uh, solo, you're going to be using primarily D minor um, pentatonic for the most part. Uh, there's a couple of little things in there, but the biggest thing about this is the bending for the most part. There's a lot of other really cool stuff in here, but the bending is insane. So I am going to preface this solo by saying that in order to really get these to ring out, the best thing you could do is either be extremely loud uh, to be able to have uh, the notes ring out as long as you need them to, um, or you could run some sort of compressor or something like that to, to boost your signal to keep it going um, as best you can. So I'm going to explain to you a little bit about how I compensate for that with the, uh, the gear that I'm using right now. So first things first, let's just take a look at this. So we're going to be using primarily D minor pentatonic. And we're also going to be using the fourth position down here, starting on the fifth fret, which is D of the fifth string. We're going to be playing this shape as well. And a couple other places, like um, if you know the BB King box, so to speak, that's the one right above here right up there with the 13 and the 15 in this case. So we're gonna be playing up there as well. So the first thing we got here is the beginning of this solo going. Okay, so the trick with all of the things we're gonna be doing in this solo is to try and play them with confidence, okay? Um, David Gilmore, if you've ever heard me talk about him before, David Gilmore for me is one of those guys that's really hard to replicate because he's so smooth. I mean, he just does some things that don't seem like they should be that hard, but they they just, they really are um, in terms of replicating the sound. So do the best you can, just like I will. And we'll look at this. So the first thing we've got here is this lick. Now what I'm doing here is I'm doing a pull off from 13 to 10. And then I'm gonna play my uh, 12 on the fourth, or on the third string, excuse me and then I'm gonna go back to the 10 on the second string. Then I'm gonna go back to the 12th fret of the 13, or excuse me, of the third string, excuse me. And I'm gonna do a bend there. Okay, just bend it up a whole step. And then I'm gonna to go to 10, 10. And then we end on a 13 bend on the second string. And you can give it a little vibrato if you'd like to at the end. And then you're gonna go. Okay, now right there what I'm doing is I'm playing the two tens on the second and third strings three times, da da da. Okay, now here comes the first little quirky bend this. And what he does there is he takes that 13, he bends it up a whole step, then he stops the string, and then he shoots it way up there. And then he brings it back down, and you're going to notice there is where my volume kind of dies. It's a little bit better, okay? So I have... Sorry. And then our little... Then we've got our... Now you gotta shoot it up there. Now right there, we're gonna go into the next lick and we're doing that pull off again from 13 to 10. And we're going to the um, 12th fret of the third string again. And then we're gonna bend that 12th fret. Okay, so let me slow the whole thing down and show you what I've got so far. So I've got And then our little groove here. Now we got to come over here and do. So you're going to bend it up, stop it for a second, then bend it up again, way up, and bring it back down. And then. Okay. Then we've got this lick. Okay. So right there, we get introduced to a new note which is this, this nine right here, which is not pentatonic. 
right there. Okay. We often call that a second or a ninth in a bigger scale when we talk about diatonic scales. And it's just a really common note to use when you want your pentatonic to sound a little more colorful and um, kind of fill it up a little bit. Okay, so that's what we've got there. That's what he's using. So he's going to go. So he's doing a pull-off from 10 to 9, then doing a 12 back to that same 9. Okay. Then we're going to do a slide from 10 to 12 on the fourth string. And then we're going to go to 12 on the third, and then back to 12 on the fourth. So, so it's a really pretty sounding lick. Okay? So now we've got... Hear that rhythm? And hear that rhythm? They're both very similar to each other. Okay? Okay, so again, picking up some isms here that, that David Gilmore does that we can certainly use both in position and in groove and in rhythm, of course. So starting at the beginning here, we've got... And then... Then we've got our... And you really want to be aware of the bends that you're doing. Now again, you don't have to add vibratos onto everything if you don't want to, but it's 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 used quite frequently by most players, certainly with David Gilmore as well. So you've got to learn how to do your vibrato, and you've got to learn how to be able to do it on a bend as well. Okay? Now again, right now we're not going to go into a whole dissertation on bending and vibrato, because um, hopefully you've kind of done some of that before, but there certainly is um, further study of those two things that can certainly help you. Okay? So here we go, from the beginning, sorry, that lick is coming, then our little funk thing, then we've got our big bend, now we're going to end that with those two tens again, just real quick, then we're going to go. So we've got these two tens to this twelve. So I've got da 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 da. What actually sounds like a um, Rage Against the Machine song. Da 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 da. Um, <clears throat> Bulls on Parade. Actually, it's the same kind of groove. So we have. And then we're gonna go right there. I'm going from the two tens to the two twelves, and then back to the two tens, and giving it a little bit of a pull. Okay, so from the beginning, then our big bend, little 10 there, and then, okay, now we're going to go to the 13 on the first string, and we're going to do that with a little rake. And you can do the rake any way you want, but basically all you're doing is you're deadening the strings before it by touching them, like that. Okay, so I'm just touching it here with my first finger, and then I'm going into my 13. And I'm going to play the 13 twice on its own. See that? Now I'm going to go back to that 13 on the second string and do it again really big, so it's going to go... Now, let me see if I can't deaden out that note so it goes. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to bend it up. You're going to bend it up even higher. You're going to bend it up even higher and then bring it back down and then do a normal bend. So you're going. Now, normally, David would do all of that with one pick. But because my string will die before I ever get there, I'm going to pick it a few times to keep the string vibrating. Okay, so again, it's gonna it's gonna take its toll on the fingertips if you've never really done this sort of thing before, and you got to crank it up there. So if you have really thick strings on your guitar, you might find this difficult. You might not, but you might find it kind of difficult. Okay, 
So we've got three now, three crazy bends, and they're all a little bit different from each other. So let me start from the beginning again. Here's the first one. We have a pause in between. And then. And our. And we're gonna go to our 13 with a rake. Here it comes. So bum, right? Okay, now we've got this cool little dissension. Which is right down the pentatonic scale, so we're gonna go pretty traditional blues lick there, or rock and roll lick. And right there, what I'm gonna do is a, what's called a pre-bend or a ghost bend. So I'm playing. Okay, from there, I'm gonna do some groups of three. So I've got. So right there, I'm doing a pull off from 12 to 10 on the third string, going to 12 on the fourth. And then I'm gonna go. So now I'm going 10, 12, 10. So I have. And then I'm gonna go 12, 10, 12 on the fifth to, or excuse me, fourth to fifth strings. So it looks like this. And then, and then, and then I'm actually gonna stay there, start on that same 12, and I'm gonna go 12, 10, 8. Like that. So I have. See that? So let me put the whole thing together here. So I have. Now I'm gonna go like this. So I'm playing 10, 8, 10, 8, 10. And I'm playing those with pull-offs. Again, if you'd rather pick them, you certainly can. Okay, so let me play it a little bit faster, put the whole thing together so you can hear it. So it ends with, and then, which is 8, tw uh, eight 10, 8, 10. Okay. So. Okay. So again, the beauty of video is, you can watch this as many times as you need to to break down each section as needed, okay? Now most of it, I mean the two big things here are the funk kind of grooves. That sort of thing in between. And then those, the, those bends on the 13th fret, right? Those are pretty huge. So here's the whole thing together so far. Really hit that bend right there. 13, here we go. Hit that bend too. Then why? Okay, now we're gonna rake up to that 13. Now we've got. Right? Keep that string alive as best you can. Now we come down to this long dissension. Okay, now we're gonna shift gears. We're gonna shift to another position. We're gonna go. Okay, which is pretty cool too. So we're gonna slide into the seventh fret of the fourth string. And you're hearing some of these rhythms that occur over and over and over within his playing. Okay, so we start off with that. Seven, five, seven. Here we're gonna do a hammer on pull off to the seven on the third string. Now we're gonna go doing a pull off there from seven to five on the third string. Now we're gonna go. So it's a pick, pick, pull off. Then we're gonna go to the sixth fret of the second string and we're gonna bend that up a little bit. Okay. Now we're gonna go back here and we're gonna do that same thing. So we're bending it up. Bending it up, bringing it down, going way up, and then coming down again. Okay, so we have this. 
Oops, sorry. Okay. Now we're going to head over to the uh, 15th fret of the first string. And we've got that thing. So we're going to bend that 15 up, full step. And then we're going to do a pull off from 13 to 10. Then we've got this little walk. Okay, so we're going 15 up, doing that little thing. And now we're going to play 15 on the second string, 13, 12 on the first string. Okay, so there's a new note for us right there. Okay, now again, it's not really new though because it's the second that we were talking about before, just an octave higher. And then we go to that 15 and we bend it up. We start doing kind of what's called a, uh, often called a siren bend, where it's just kind of moving with the rhythm of the song. So it's going ba na 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 Okay, then he does this. So he bends that 15 up and then brings it down and goes to the 15 on the second string. Okay, so let me show you that so far. So we came from this, sorry. Here's our new bend, the 15. Then. And you go into there. So this thing kind of fades when he goes. Just kind of fades out and then he goes. Okay, then we're gonna move up to 18. We're gonna hit that twice to give it a little vibrato. Then we're going to move up to 20, and we're going to bend that one up once. So we have... Sorry. Okay, so there we're doing two pull-offs from 20 to 17. Okay, so now we've got... Here they come. Then, now right there, we're going back down to those two tens on the second, third strings. We're going to go bum, 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 bum. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a blues bend by pulling them just a little bit at the very end before I go to that 12. Okay, now we end it with this little chord thing. We're going to do a little slide from 12 to 14 on the fourth string. Then we're going to go to 12 and 13 on the second and third strings. And then we're going to go to 12. And we're going to play that. I think we do it three times. Then. Now there we got the tens again going to that 12. There's the end, the little. Okay, so that's your very last lick there is going. Okay, so let me put the whole thing together now. And doubles. And we got this with the pause in between. Come down. Our little uh, use of the nine here. And then we've got our. Okay, then we're gonna head up to that 13 with a scrape, uh, a rake or a scrape, people call it. Now we gotta go. So that's the big one. There's all those bends in there. Now we got our dissension. Move positions. Pick as needed. Remember, he doesn't pick all that, but I have to to keep my string alive. And then we go to 15. And I've got that little pull off from 13 to 10. 18. 20. Two little ones. 
like that, and then... So there I got my slide. And then... And there I'm just doing this, this scratching a couple of times. And then heading to my 10, 10, and then 8, 10. Pretty funky sounding. So again, what do we have here? We really have this position of D minor. We have this position of D minor, which is the same as the one up here. And then we've got a little bit of this BB King box here, this blues there that he's using as well. And then we know that nine, the ninth or the second we call it. So he's using it both in this position and in this position, right? Okay. Well, let's look down here. Down here, if we had pentatonic. Well, we got this note. This is new. Pentatonically. This would be new. What is that? It's the ninth again. So what's really neat about this is if you were in a position like the ninth or the second, the one I'm talking about here, the single note, is a really cool note to be able to add in when you want something else, but you don't know what big scale you should be using. Okay, it's a very common thing for players to use, and certainly David Gilmore does as well. So you've got your pentatonic, and you're just adding in this one new note, but you're adding it in, in various places. And of course, he's not overusing it. He's just using it very stylistically so it doesn't get boring. <laughs> You know, Carlos Santana would be another big one that would do something like that a lot. Um, so you can see lots of bending, lots of blues bends, all that kind of stuff. Lots of different things like that. But keep track of that ninth a little bit. And the big thing here is space. I mean, there's spots where he's not playing for two, three seconds he's leaving it alone, which is pretty cool. Okay, we're always thinking we got to fill all the time, and we don't. So have fun with this. Again, watch watch for those bends and do the best you can and bend those suckers up. And uh, <laughs> if you hurt your fingers at all, take a break. You know, go rest a little bit and come back and give it a try. But I, I use, I, you know, I use nines on my guitars, and so you know it isn't too bad to try and push those way up there. But you got to make sure that your action is set pretty decent and that you can just get those up as far as you want. You know, because that's, that's quite a ways up there. So take care and practice hard and, you know, let me know how things are going with it.